This is Echo 3, and let's discuss single engine propeller planes. In the space plane hangar, I'm going to start by building a basic aircraft. A general rule when building an aircraft is that if it looks like a real aircraft, it will probably work. I've seen many players try to build sci-fi inspired aircraft and wondered why they cannot get it to work. For this video, I'm going to stick with a simple design. I'm placing my main wings right about on the center of mass of the airplane and placing the ailerons on the wingtips for roll control. Next, I'm placing a vertical stabilizer and setting the rudder to yaw control. Lastly, I'm placing some elevons on the fuselage because I know they'll snap on straight there and using the offset tool to drag them to the back. I've set them to control pitch. Think of an aircraft as a lever. A force is most efficient when applied to the end of the lever, so control surfaces work best when placed on the edges of the aircraft's axis they are to control. Now, let's get to work on the robotic parts. For smaller aircraft such as this, I don't need as much power as the robotic parts are able to provide. By decreasing the motor size, I reduce mass and torque. This makes the aircraft easier to control and more fuel efficient. For this aircraft, I'm using the four-way symmetry for the propeller blades. I did not conduct experiments to see what was the best arrangement for this aircraft, as full optimization is beyond the scope of this tutorial. The engine is set for clockwise rotation, and that is clockwise as you look at the aircraft from the front and not as viewed from the cockpit. The propellers are also in the default clockwise position. The Cal 1000 will be instrumental for making this plane operate smoothly. When I first started making planes, I did not use the Cal 1000 and was needing to make lots of adjustments in flight for my planes to fly well. This is going to make flying a lot simpler. Action grouping is what's going to make this plane fun to fly. By binding parts to action groups, there will be less to manage in flight. For this style of plane, and there are others that will work, I am binding the throttle input to the Cal 1000 and the propeller blades are bound to the Cal 1000. I am also binding the plane's power to the RCS key. I'll explain that more later. Note, I messed up a little bit on the placement of my front landing gear. I put them just a little too far back. I should have caught this in the space plane hangar when I looked at my center of mass indicator. The plane will still be okay, but you'll see my issue at the end of the video. With any aircraft designed for atmospheric flight, it is important to check the aerodynamic center and the mass center. Note that my fuel tanks are placed evenly on either side of the mass center. As fuel drains, the center of mass won't move. My center of mass will stay consistently ahead of the center of lift. This craft is using a tail dragger gear configuration. That can be handy for keeping the propeller blades from hitting the ground. After deploying the blades, I am checking on where I want their limits on their rotation to be. In this case, I have set their deployment angles to go from minus 90 degrees to minus 40 degrees. Minus 90 will not provide any forward thrust, and minus 40 will be just about right for going at full speed. You can see I am using the Cal 1000 to set these limits. By doing this correctly, the plane will fly well. If you set this wrong, the plane will go backwards even. With Jeb in the cockpit, I think it's about time to take Pippi out for a test. I press RCS to turn the engine on. The engine speed and torque will remain constant and I'll control the aircraft's speed with the deployment angle of the blades. At different air speeds, different propeller angles will be more efficient. This plane has a very low stall speed and is able to take off quickly. Note that I am not using the SAS. Once airborne, this engine has plenty of power to get the plane up to speed. Upon further testing, I was able to reach a speed of 205 meters per second at 1,000 meters altitude. That's 460 miles per hour at 3,300 feet for the Americans watching. I use the trim functions to keep the aircraft stable in flight. I trim the elevons to control the rate of climb, and I trim the ailerons to control the roll, because this engine produces torque and will try to roll the aircraft. As I come in for a landing, I can use the throttle to control the angle of the propeller blades. This will cause the blades to increase drag and slow the aircraft down. Since the plane has a very low stall speed, I can comfortably slow the aircraft down for my landing. And because I can turn my engine off with the RCS action group, I can nullify the engine torque for a more stable landing. I had turned off steering on the front landing gear and increased their dampening so they wouldn't cause the plane to veer to the side or bounce too much. As I began to brake, I realized the error of my ways in not placing the front gear further forward. But a little bump from the propellers 
off the ground, got this plane back where it should be. And here we have an easy way to make and fly a single engine propeller plane. There are other ways that work, and you are more than welcome to share your